Well, here we are. It's Friday. Uh, what's the date? Uh, July 29th, 2022. Summer's here. Uh, the weather's been great. Uh, uh, there's a big tuna tournament going on here. If all of you, any of you are fishermen, um, you'll know that the uh, uh, the Wicked Tuna Gang and all that and the local guys, there's about 60, 70 boats out here right now, big boats uh, going out tuna fishing, which is exciting. Uh, these are, they're going after, you know, 600, 800, 900 pound fish on a reel. Try that sometime. <laughs> uh, so at any rate, here we are. Uh, everything is fine. Um, and uh, so what's been going on? It's been kind of quiet, actually. Uh, as, as, as I mentioned last week, and I'm going to keep saying it, uh, the summer is <clears throat> very quiet in the antique and auction market. Uh, often there's a few summer sales. Uh, Europe uh, does almost, there are almost no auctions right now going on in, in uh, Europe to speak of. Uh, the Netherlands are quiet, the, uh, England, all that. So if you're using the global pages, you'll notice there's very little on there right now. It'll be back as soon as it comes, and uh, we'll put it all, all the stuff on there. But it's it's been quiet. And the economy uh, is affecting uh, prices. So if you uh, like to collect, now is the time to collect if you have the money. Um, uh, prices are uniformly softer across the board right now from what I'm seeing. Uh, and it, it's not because there's a lack of interest. It's right now that there's a, a, a lot of worry, uh, a lot of economic concerns globally. Obviously, we, you know, the United States uh, was uh, officially uh, crossed the threshold into a recession uh, yesterday. As a matter of fact, uh, we've had uh, two <clears throat> excuse me two uh, two quarters of negative economic growth. So. Uh, that's it <laughs> until it comes back. We've had them before. It'll be over at some point. Usually they last anywhere from a few months to a year and then the economies start to turn around, the markets come back, money loosens up again and uh, things will be fine. So if, if you're sitting there worried, don't be. Um, I've, seen, uh, I've seen enough of these over the years. Uh, we get these every 10 years as a bump. Uh, leave your investments alone. Um, if you can, um, just just don't touch them, don't mess with them, because uh, you just end up losing money because you end up paying taxes on gains and things, and you don't want to do that. Nobody wants to pay taxes. So there you are. All right, that's my little curbside uh, thing. Uh, we did another video today, if you haven't seen it yet, on a scandal that took place at eBay. Uh, it actually happened a little over a year ago, but it's, it's still on, sort of onward going. They're convicting people and whatnot. But it's an interesting story, and we I did a video on it because it points to a bigger problem at eBay than, 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 than the criminal charges. <clears throat> and um, I uh, gave my thoughts on where I think eBay is going uh, because uh, that right now, it, in my mind, the company isn't being managed by very bright people, and um, um, they just seem to be uh, intent on crashing that poor company. So uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, uh, the, the stock market touts can only pump the stock for so long, and eventually something's got to give. Either the company gets their act together or um, they're going to spiral out like so many tech other tech companies have after a few years. But uh, anyway, that's, a, that's another story. What was going on this week, you may ask? Okay. Um, there were some good auctions and there were uh, some pretty good prices. And this was um, uh, one of the things. This was uh, the Briggs auction in Garnet, Pennsylvania. This just this auction just finished up, and uh, it's uh, currently still live. But uh, there were some very the, uh, a couple of uh, this really good buy popped up. Was this a, a group of six immortals, probably late 18th century? Uh, typically, these sell for two or three hundred dollars a piece. Uh, and the six of them sold for $400. Now, it's an assembled set. Um, it is not a, a set that started out. It doesn't appear to be a set that started out life together because the glazes are a bit different on some of them. Looks like somebody bought one and, you know, maybe maybe these two, the ones on the end started, you know, started out together. But there are some different uh, uh, glazes and pastes appearing here. But as an assembled set, this is a nice one. It's a really nice one. And uh, somebody picked it up for just $400, which was a steal. And a very, very low estimate on it for some reason. But these are late 18th, early 19th century pieces. Um, they have a couple of little repairs in them, so forth. But those of you 
that buy Chinese porcelain figures uh, know that what these typically sell for. So I think this was I think this is partly the economy, and it's summer. Partly people aren't paying attention. So so right now through the end of August, if you're buying. Uh, buy aggressively <laughs> uh, because uh, people are away and there's some hesitancy in the market temporarily. So it's 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 worth uh, getting out there and, and taking a few few up at bats, as they say. Now on to this, the Export Porcelain Group. This was this was a really nice little lot. Um, this was at Doyle, New York. Okay, and those of you that think you can't buy from the from bigger auction houses in New York, well, there you go. This whole lot sold for $250. This was a great buy. I'm sure there were some pieces with little repairs on them and whatnot, but some very nice little blue and white examples in here. Uh, some nice 19th and 18th century porcelains, mostly export from what I can see, but a terrific lot. My goodness, uh, uh, you know, for, for next to nothing, a couple of hundred dollars um, from Doyle's. It was estimated at four to 600, went for 250. That was a great buy. Um, I, I've said it a million times. The, these, the, the mid-sized auction houses that are good reputations, like Doyle's, Freeman's, these places. Um, uh, uh, I like Bronx down in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, there's some good, you know, independent auction houses uh, that are good size. They do significant volume, and um, they get good estates. You always want to go to the people that get good estates. And uh, uh, there's some very nice buys to be had out there right now. All right, and then there was this. This is the the second one of these I've seen in the last couple of years, and it is. Uh, I actually had an inquiry about it. Um, it was. It's a uh, Chinese export plate uh, uh, made for the Portuguese market, but done during the Guangxu period. Um, and these are pretty rare. Uh, there's one on. Uh, there's one um, uh, of these in a book uh, on the on on the Portuguese Portuguese export porcelain. Uh, it's fairly rare. Uh, it's a commemorative plate, and uh, one sold a few a few weeks ago went for around fifteen hundred dollars. And this one, and the the had a couple of inquiries about it, and I, I told them all the same thing. Um, it's going to probably bring you know around fifteen hundred because that's what the other one brought. And uh, sure enough, it brought thirteen hundred and twenty-seven dollars plus the premium. So there you are. But rare type of plate, rare type of plate, very very pretty with the with the Portuguese ships on it. Very fine enameling and uh, just excellent, and, and and particularly good for the for the for the late nineteenth century for Guangxu. Uh, this is a top quality porcelain and a pretty rare bird. Uh, and somebody picked it up for thirteen hundred dollars, and I think that was a very good buy because it's, it's just it's a historic porcelain, and uh, there's a, there's a, there's a whole bunch written about it in in the in the, in the books. Um, so there you go. And the other thing that sold was this garniture set. I had talked about this a few weeks ago. This was at Eldred's on Cape Cod. Their sale took place uh, two days ago. So I think it's been going on for a couple of days. But they had this nice looking garniture set, uh, three larger and three smaller vases, all in the same pattern. Very attractive. They looked to be in really good condition, um, including the gilding on them. Uh, the gilding looks very, very intact. Uh, which is, as I always say, always check the gilding, see what kind of shape it's in. The bottoms of them all look fine. Eldridge does a good job with photography. There's a chip out of one. You can get that fixed for about 60 bucks um, or 70. At any rate, uh, there they are. This was a nice lot. And somebody picked them all up for $1,400, which actually was, you know, well, the, by the time you pay the premium, you're, you're within the range of the buyer's. Um, with the, the selling estimate, but it's a very, very attractive uh, set, classic uh, pattern, uh, and that particular pattern appears on a lot of very fine uh, export wares that were made for the European market as well. Uh, it's, a, it's sort of a universal pattern, but beautiful quality. Uh, the biggest one was 11 and a half inches tall. So that was a pretty good deal for, to get all of those uh, together. I think I think the three of them right here are, are, are should be worth uh, more than what they paid for it. And then they got all these little ones here to go with it. So it's pretty nice to get those complimentary pieces. All right, and then over here to this. This was a, 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 a this lot got a lot of interest. Uh, six Chinese export plates. This was at Alex Cooper's sale in in, New, in Maryland, right? Maryland, yeah. And a nice looking set. It's sort of an instant collection. Um, uh, there's, there's two, uh, there's a pair of plates in here. Then there's this nice Mandarin dish at the bottom with uh, precious objects and characters around the rim. 
and then this rather attractive, um, uh, again, mid 19th century or so, uh, a, 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 a rose canton plate um, with these floral sprays radiating out of the center. And then this one up top, I think this is the one that got everybody's attention. The underglazed blue with the dragon in the middle, uh, quite Chinese in taste uh, and, and very nicely done. And then a butterfly rimmed piece here. Um, if you didn't notice it, that's all butterflies flying around the rim. Uh, very classic Canton uh, decoration. Um, they, they provided good pictures front and back of everything. There they are. One of them had a Kangxi mark on it, which, which of course is apocryphal. But somebody, uh, a couple of people love this set, and uh, they chased it up to $1,100. But if you're looking to ha get a bunch of plates to hang in a room, or if, you're, if you've got a couple of pieces that match these and you want to build out a, a collection or a set or something like that, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be, you know, but in the end, it's not that much. So it's what it's come out to, about $175, $200 a plate, which is fine. That's, a, that's still a good buy. All right, and then this, I talked about this set a couple of weeks ago because I thought it was so pretty. Um, this um, garniture set, and these were big, big pieces. F um, the, uh, the jar was 16 inches tall. This was not, you know, these weren't 10 inch pieces. These were big, uh, and, but uh, very unusual with this cracked ice um, uh, blue ground and these leaf form cartouches on all the pieces here. They're upside down leaves, filled in and enameled beautifully. This is beautiful quality stuff. Notice all the gilding that's still present. The gilding on these are just in excellent, excellent condition. And uh, it's an 18th century set. Nicely done. There's the underside. There the bases. Late 18th century. Beautiful. And uh, somebody paid 4500 plus the premium for these. But big pieces. 16 inches. And uh, I think the other pieces, what were they? 14 inches. So you've got three significantly uh, well-sized pieces in an unusual color palette. And unusual color palettes of fine porcelain, um, things like this, things that stand out, uh, always bring a premium. And um, the auction house seemed to be aware of that because they estimated them at four to 6,000. And I think by the time you're done with the buyer's premium, you're pretty close to the 6,000 number. Uh, but these were lovely. These were truly lovely. And, and they don't turn up very often. And then this, this Kangxi period uh, soup terrine. Um, Femi, uh, Femi, well, it's sort of Femi, yeah, sort of Femi Ver Wukai, but nice quality, nice handles on it, uh, well done, teardrop drop finial on top, very nice piece of early 18th century ceramic right there. Uh, let's see, uh, what did it bring? $600. That was a steal. That was a really good buy. This was also from Alex Cooper. Um, I don't know if there's anything wrong with it, but the buyer's premium was 28%. Uh, so by the time you're all done, you're you're uh, into this thing for about $800, 750 uh, yeah, $800 roughly, somewhere around there. But nice terrine, very nice terrine, nice colors. And uh, looked like the finial had never been knocked off of it, which is almost a near miracle. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that. I like that a lot. It, it, elegant drawing, elegant shape, um, and in good condition. All right. And then on to this. This was a very nice charger. Um, this was an English market 18th century armorial um, uh, uh, plate, but with an unusual color palette with that light greenish blue running around the inner rim and on the outer rim uh, um, uh, up, up close if you looked at it. Uh, it's all overglaze enameling on this. There's no underglaze that I could see on it. Maybe there is a little bit of it in here. I can't tell if it is or not. No, hold on. It may be enamels. Okay, those are overglaze enamels. Okay, so it's all overglaze. That's cool. And uh, there's a thing on the back here. There's a name of a uh, uh, Su Chao. Oh, yeah, Su Chao, uh, the seller. They're a big high-end Chinese porcelain dealer. Decorated. They sell great stuff in New York. Uh, 17, what did they date it as? 1719 to 25. So it's late Kangxi to early Yongshan period. Uh, great piece of porcelain, 14 inches and a half in diameter. And it went for 1100 plus the premium. So around $1,500 by the time you're all done, roughly. All right, but beautiful piece and big. And in good shape, too. This is the other thing. I always, always check condition and wear to the enamels. Uh, especially on armorial pieces. It has a big impact on value. And uh, the, all of the enamels on this plate looked like they were in great shape. doesn't look like many dinners were had off of it <laughs> um, because they do wear down. You often see them with knife cuts in the enamels in the center. 
um, if they've been used a lot. And then lastly was this. This was a great buy. This was uh, at uh, Garth's in Columbus, Ohio. A pair of these uh, Batavia bulls, 18th century, possibly, uh, they, they thought they were possibly Kangxi. I don't think they are. I think they're, I think they're probably uh, Qinlong, judging by these enamels up here. Maybe late Yongshan, but I think probably Qinlong period. Uh, but beautiful quality. Beautiful, beautiful quality. Nicely drawn, very classic Chinese uh, landscape with the pagoda. Um, in the back of it, they're brown glazed Batavia wear. Nice looking foot rim on there. Um, very fine. And somebody picked up the pair for $200. All right. And these were eight and a half inches. These weren't saucers. These were plates or actually shallow bowls, technically. But that was a good buy. That was an excellent buy. $100 a piece for those. And this is all because of the economy. This is all because people are hesitant right now. And uh, if you're brave and you got a little money, you can do very well. With, get some great things at about half price. Uh, and then you have this, this soft paste box. This was over on eBay. Those are all the, all those items were from the uh, global member pages. And now we're taking a look at some eBay lots because not a lot of stuff sold on the on the um, global pages this week just because it's summer. Uh, is this this very very nice Famille Rose soft paste box? Late Qing Dynasty had a um, uh, Kangxi mark on the back. It's not Kangxi, obviously, but uh, a beautiful quality. Nice quality. This is a very attractive little box. And there are box collectors out there that love these things. And uh, it ended up selling, I think, I think fine. $521. And of course, there's no buyer's premium to deal with, which is very nice. And uh, there you are. Good item. And uh, let's see here. And then this, the uh, 18th century uh, Canton enamel on copper uh, dish. This was sold by the Shangri-La guys, uh, ceramics and collectibles over there in, in the Netherlands. Uh, this was a very pretty piece of Canton uh, enamel uh, because of the blue. This is electric blue. It, so, it, looks, it looks deep. It glows uh, very fine. And the, uh, the details... In the enamel it was very good the back of it had a couple of losses to the enamels um, up there here as you can see uh, and the cracks on the on the back that are very normal but the quality of the uh, of the floral decoration on this the shading was just I think stupendous I think the shading on this was really 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 good and it's the kind of thing where if you looked at it and you're a condition freak um, you're not going to want to buy it because a little bit of the enamel from a blank area is missing off the back. But you lose the opportunity to own something that is where the decoration was done, where the work was done, was superb. And that's, that's what's important. Um, the areas that are enameled and decorated, how skilled was the work or the artist that did it. And this was, I think, shaded in beautifully. Simple. Only one, only, there are only two, really, two colors on this. Uh, a, a little bit of gold and varying shades of uh, blue and white and a tiny bit of white um, at that light light blue mostly but beautiful beautiful looking uh, dish and it was about six inches or so in diameter it wasn't an enormous one but look at that somebody got a great buy 130 dollars all right that was a, a very nice thing that was a really nice thing and then this, um, I love carvings as many of you know um, and I, I don't particularly draw a line between Ming or Qing or late Qing or early Republic, whatever. If I like the work, I, 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 I tend to want to um, focus on them. It's my weakness. And uh, this was a wonderful carving of, of an immortal with his staff. And uh, it I, looks to me like it was probably made uh, maybe in the, in, the, in the 1920s or 30s or something. I don't think it's brand new, but I, I think it's quite well done. And it was enormous. It was uh, about 16 or 17 inches tall. This wasn't a five or six inch carving. Um, always check the dimensions. When you see something on here and you think it's a standard sort of thing, check the size. Because in this case, they didn't put anything in the picture to give you a sense of size to it. So I, I suspect a lot of people just looked at it and went by and said, oh, I don't need another six inch wood carving. Uh, but this wasn't six inches, if you're, or if you're bothered to read down, 43 centimeters. So it's just a little under uh, about 17, 16, 17 inches in height. And somebody picked it up for $223. And this was from a good seller um, in the UK, Bamboon. He sells nice things. Um, uh, and he's over in, in Glasgow. 
And uh, I, th I think that was an absolute steal. The shipping is going to be about about half of what you paid for it because of its size and you don't want to get damaged, but uh, well worth it. Nicely, nicely done. And then this I threw in there last week because I love old photographs. I, I love old photographs of China. And uh, oh, it reminds me before I go any further. Starting in September, I guess I was I was at a, a social thing the other night in the uh, 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 a friend of mine, uh, Karina Corrigan, who's the curator of the Peabody Essex Museum, was there. Um, so was Billy Sargent, and who's a former curator. But anyway, we had a nice time, and she we we got talking about what's coming up. The Peabody Essex Museum has an astounding, and there's going to be a book with it too, an astounding uh, exhibition of very early Chinese photographs. And I don't know if you know anything about the about the PBD Essex Museum, but it's probably the best is the best China trade collection in North America by far. Um, and they have pulled together from their own collection and from other institutions early photographs by great photographers who were in China going back to 1850. And they are doing a big show on it. It's going to be fabulous. If you, if and these are wonderful, you know, scenes, you know, from the Tongxi period, photographs from the Tongxi period. Imagine that. Um, uh, but uh, uh, she, she was very, very excited about it. And there is a book coming out. So um, uh, once the once the exhibit starts, I'll I'll, 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 once I, I'll get a copy of the book and I'll tell you more about it. But so if you're going to be, and it's the show is going to go on for about six months. So if you're in the Boston area um, between September and I think next February, I think she said it runs until. Um, uh, get to Salem. It's a half an hour, 40 minute drive from Boston and uh, get in to see that show because it's going to be great. Old photographs of China are absolutely fascinating and there is a, a huge growing market uh, among collectors for them. And this was an interesting, uh, interesting album. This was street scenes and um, um, schools and gatherings of people and, 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 and traditional dress and so forth that was done by a missionary. A missionaries brought back amazing amounts of stuff. They're in China around 1900, 69 Chinese photos, circa 1900 missionary, oh, the missionary hospital school in Hanyang, okay, China and so forth. Uh, the lot, all of it, all 69 photos went for $692. And uh, as we all know, the math on that works out to about 10 bucks a photo. And uh, they'll, I hope whoever gets them um, lays them out nicely takes good care of them because uh, old photographs of China are a treasure and and they are among photo in the photo world they are the, among the rarest the good ones anyway and um, um, absolutely great love it and now over to this this was a great buy uh, I, I, I had mentioned this last week I think I mentioned it I'm pretty sure I did yeah I did um, is this Wan Lee plate and the reason I mentioned it was that this was a good one really good Wan Lee plate uh, the back of it uh, was in pretty good shape. There wasn't, a, you know, piles of kiln grit all over the place. But the the tone of the cobalt on the front and the drawing was, you know, exceptionally good. Uh, beautifully drawn, beautifully painted. Um, nice work. There well, was a hairline in it, but uh, in, in the hairline, is that the same one or is it there were two of them? Uh... Okay, yeah, there were two hairlines, uh, but you come to expect them in Wan Lee plates anyway. Uh, but this was a nice one. Look at the, the color. That color was just absolutely great. And the drawing was absolutely great. And that's what you're paying for. You pay for the art. <clears throat> and I, I think this was a very nice uh, Wan Lee example for somebody that didn't have an enormous amount of money to spend. It measured, how big is it? Almost 12 inches, 11 and 3 eighths. Went for $305. These, these Wan Lee pieces have really gotten... Uh, reasonable in price. I'm amazed. Uh, uh, 15 years ago, these were bringing double that, and I think what's happened is that they, there were there are so many of them in collections, especially in, in, in Northern Europe, and they're sort of getting flushed into the market increasingly. So you, you 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 see them all the time. But this was a nice one. The work was particularly good on it. And then these uh, uh, scallop rim plates. Um, I, we talked about these last week because I thought they were just really really nice. Uh, much better than the average uh, uh, Mandarin uh, uh, porcelains. Uh, very finely done. First half of the 19th century. Uh, beautiful enamel decoration. And it all appeared to be in really good shape. 
The enamels all appeared to be excellent. There was a tiny bit of wear to some of the gilding, but nothing, nothing at all, uh, uh, you know, dis uh, that would disqualify them if something you'd want in your collection. Uh, but the border decorations were very fine. And you have these boys here rolling out a scroll and an elderly person with his walking staff sort of supervising. And this lady is seating. It's not love. I love to see what they're in these paintings. Like here you have uh, somebody sitting on a root stool. Um, very, very, uh, a very outside uh, sort of thing. You know, like porch. It's a very, uh, it's not, I wouldn't call it porch furniture or deck furniture of the day, but you see it a lot on, uh, on terrace scenes, open scenes, garden scenes. Uh, and I, I, I really like them because they're they're naturalistic. They're, they have a wonderful look to them. At any rate, somebody uh, really loved these, and the pair of them went for $1,026. Uh, but they were much better than average. This is typically these plates sell for about a pair for about 600. But they're, the decoration is not as good as on these. These were particularly fine, and that's what drives the price. It's not the shape or the age necessarily. It's the quality of the work. Always the quality of the work. And then over here to this, a pair of um, like I think there's sixth rank or seventh rank badges, um, uh, very nicely done. Uh, a little bit, a little bit of fading to the red, as you can see, it's gone sort of pink and light salmony color and so forth, which is typical. Um, uh, it's it's nice to see them when they're full and vibrant, but it's not a surprise to see them where they've faded a little bit. And uh, anyway, they went for thirty one hundred and fifty dollars, uh, and again. The, the demand for early silks, decorative silks, needlework silks, blind stitching, and all that, uh, the market still seems to really want them. And um, um, here you have it. All right. Now, what's coming up? There's not a lot of stuff to talk about today because it's, it's, it's quiet. Well, this is one of the things that will be on the newsletter page this week is this uh, Chinese export tea set. This is from Super Shrink. Uh, and as always, they have nice things. They, they, you know, he's a silver expert in, in all areas of silver. He's very reliable, um, professional dealer. He's, this isn't somebody working out of his kitchen. And uh, uh, it, 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 these are by Hung Chong, who is a Cantonese uh, silversmith shop around, well, 1890. And I think they worked up until about 1910. But this is a nice looking set. Uh, very, And you'll notice that the form with this relief work done like this, um, you'll see Yixing pots were done in the same way, the same style with this uh, sort of naturalistic uh, tree uh, display going up through the middle like bark and, and with knots in the wood. And then you have these uh, 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 plum blossoms and so forth coming over in this root form handle. You sometimes see this uh, virtually identical uh, pieces of Yixing ware from the same period. It was a popular style. And uh, they're up to $111. I suspect they'll get up to around 1000 at 1500 by the time they're done. Uh, they've got seven days to go. They'll be on the newsletter page. All right. And then this, a nice little Femi Ver Kangxi period uh, dish with the uh, 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 Anwaya decoration on the rim where, where they incise the rim out. And then a simple floral spray in the center and uh, gilt rim. Okay. And uh, right now it's up to, it's got one bit. It's at six bucks. It's, it's apparently got a little bit of damage to it, but check that out because uh, you might be able to pick it up for 50 or $60, uh, that kind of thing. And then onto this, a very nice silk, framed silk uh, depiction of a bird. Um, this is very nice. This is really, this really I, I was looking, I, I spotted this this morning when I was having my coffee, and I just thought that the, the silk work is very fine all the way through. Uh, the bird is nicely depicted. It looks to be in good shape. It looks like it's been in this frame for a very long time. Here's the back of it. Um, and you, you see all these. If, I, if you buy this, if one of you buys this, um, immediately take it and get this back off of it. Okay? Put an acid-free back on it and then keep it in the frame. The frame is fine. I like the frame. I like the old frame. But um, you want to get it out of this, away from this this backing if it's touching the silk because that's highly acidic and uh, it's not good for the fabric but you, it's a it's a tiny job you can you could you can almost do it yourself but also the nails as you can see have been in there a very long time they've actually started to rust and run down and there the acidity from the nails is going into the paper at this point so you definitely want to uh, clean that up to preserve your uh, thing right now it's got it's got nine days to go it's up it's just has a bit of 55 dollars on it uh, this is a seller in Pennsylvania. I don't know who it is. Um, down the old path. 
Okay, it's been on eBay for a while. It's got 2,486 uh, things. I suspect if you check his listing, he's probably a general line uh, dealer. Uh, this was probably done between 1890 and 1910. But beautiful quality, nice condition, nice picture. It reminds me of a pith painting. That's that's how pith paintings were often done. Um, but uh, it should be worth in the 350 to $450 range at the end of the day, but may go for less, may go for a little more, because it is very nicely done. And uh, quality, quality, quality. That's all that matters. All right, now this. Oh, yes, this. There are two of these in this sale. These are, um, uh, you know, classical leaf paintings uh, from a book. You can see the seam down the middle, and the Chinese uh, put these together. And, th and this is a, a very classic uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, Sung uh, style uh, ink drawing, um, um, a very li very sort of a literati school painting. Uh, nicely done is the back of it. Uh, I don't know why they they could just show it once, I guess. Any rate, but the the work looks good on it. That nice early Chinese paper. This appears to be a a, a late a Qing nineteenth century uh, painting. I don't think it's a lot older than that. But very nicely done. Gosh, that's such an aesthetic to that. And there are two of these on eBay from the same seller. And um, if you, if you if you like Chinese paintings, buy them both, frame them nicely. Um, they are pretty good sizes, I recall. Hold on a second. They are um, 12 by 9 um, uh, each. So matted and laid out, they would be 14 by 13. No, they'd be bigger than that. Fifty, they'd be fifteen by something or other. So they'd be good size to hang on a wall in, a, in your den or in your living room. There, they both are. They're showing them both there, uh, but they're, they're really lovely. They're really lovely. And they, these were meant for you know went in an album at one point. And then uh, lastly is this this uh, very nice, and this was uh, this was a, 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 a Sway Dynasty uh, cup, green glazed cup, stoneware. Uh, and with, with some, some like Mishima decoration on it, these uh, stamps running around it. You, s you see them on there. And it was sold originally by Rob Bob McPherson over in, well, when he was in London. So he sold it some time ago because he, he left London. He's up in the, I think he's in the Netherlands. I don't want to say the wrong country. I think he's in the Netherlands right now. He's a very, very good dealer. He's a really good dealer. If you don't know him, he has a website. Check him out. He's, he gets great things. And he's very scholarly. He, 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 he can provide you with a lot of information, which, which is one of the reasons I, I, I don't know him particularly. I've never done business with him. But um, um, I've, I've, I've seen his stuff and seen his site. And uh, he's you know really smart. He looks everything up. He looks up the history of the pieces. He's a whiz on uh, Dutch and English trade. And all that. So, um, uh, and he deals in all kinds of things. And apparently, he sold this. But uh, 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 he's a good dealer. He's worth getting to know. Um, and uh, th this wonderful little cup with this green glaze, nice stoneware body. Uh, right now, it's up to just one hundred and seven dollars. It should bring eight hundred to a thousand pretty comfortably. Uh, if it doesn't, you got an absolutely great buy in your hands. But uh, it's a nice looking piece of early, early. Uh, uh, pottery. The seller listed as Sway to Tang, which is which is perfectly fine. And uh, who's the seller? This is a seller in Michigan. Yeah, Lake or Lake Lake um, um, Orion in Michigan. Um, Great Lakes Antiquing. Um, we've had them before. They get some things from time to time. Uh, but this was a nice looking thing. All right, they're fairly new. Um, I think maybe they had a diff slightly different username at one point. I don't know. But anyway, uh, nice looking cup. <clears throat> so check that out. It'll all be on the newsletter page. And uh, that's it for the week. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, have a great weekend. Uh, the summer's about half over, I guess, at this point. Uh, so get what you can. We're having lobsters uh, tomorrow. We're having uh, all my children and grandchildren. There's a whole gang coming. <clears throat> and uh, lobsters have come down in price, fortunately. So we're, I think we're down to about $10 a pound right now for the big ones. So we'll be picking up a bunch of three-pound lobsters tomorrow. Uh, I think I don't know how many people we have coming. I think we have 15 people coming. But anyway, we're going to be um, uh, murdering some lobsters and cooking corn and having a wonderful time uh, and melt a half a gallon of butter to go with them, of course. And uh, that's what we do here in the summer. But uh, uh, lobsters a few months ago up around $20 a pound when the... Uh, 
fisheries were shut down for a short time during the whale migrations. <clears throat> when the whaling, when the whales, the right whale in particular is very vulnerable. So uh, during the winter, when they migrate through uh, uh, February, March, April, in that period, um, all the lobstermen around here have to go out and haul all their gear. They have to haul all their traps into shore uh, because they don't want the right whales getting tangled up in the in the gear because it kills them. And uh, the, once they're done and they've got them out of the area, the lobstermen put all the traps back and the price of lobsters goes right down again. So that's pretty terrific. And uh, um, and we do see we do you do, we do get right whales up here. They come in between here and Cape Cod, and we had a uh, great white shark right behind our house the other day, um, swimming uh, along. Uh, here's some beach swimmers. The water has been warm, but we uh, this side of the bay here, um, the uh, uh, Ipswich River comes out across the bay, and it's it's uh, full of se they get seals to congregate there because some good feeding. And the water's warm, and the great whites will come in and try to catch themselves a seal. While they're feeding on fish, the whales, the, the, the great whites will come in and try to pick off a seal for a good meal. And uh, uh, it happens, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. And, but at any rate, uh, the, I guess there was a great white out there swimming around. Some people were pretty close to it. They were okay. It didn't bother them. Um, um, I've swum with sharks before. They don't, they don't really do much unless you annoy them and act stupid. Then they'll... Might take a bite out of you, but uh, I've gone diving around sharks, and they generally couldn't care less. Uh, anyway, um, that's sort of what's going on here. We'll finish up with that. Uh, have a great weekend. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, give us a thumbs up if you like the videos. And uh, do check out the one we just put up, the, uh, the the one on eBay. I think it's sort of an interesting story, and it's very illustrative of um, how. Uh, some corporations can really go off the rails, and uh, in that in that case, they really did. And it's sort of a peek under the hood at the culture of that company, and it's a little disturbing. <laughs> okay, more than disturbing, it's frightening. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. Bye bye. Till next week.